Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Meaningful People Podcast. Nachi here. Unfortunately, Momo could not make it to the office this morning. He got caught up with something, but in much time, he'll be back by next episode. Um, he was in the episode, just the intro, outro. You'll be hearing my boring voice. We sat down with Rabbi Yossi Zakatinsky on this week's episode. Uh, incredible. Just full with so many gems. Uh, you probably never heard his story, or maybe you don't You don't know who the Rav is, but you'll know after this hour and a half. Trust me, stick with it. It's an amazing episode. I want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of this episode. That is Isaac Newman, who sponsored Lezech Nishmas, his mother, Rechama Para Malkalea, Bas Ari Leib, special, special woman. And we give a big thank you to the to the Newman family for sponsoring this episode. I want to give a big shout out to our friend Moshe Alpert. Guys, listen, do you like money? You like money, right? And you want more money. So you need to know how to manage that money better. It's that simple. You make money. You don't want to lose money. You want to know you're set up with the right 401k. You want to know that you have the right investments. You want to have passive income. Moshe Alpert is the person that you need to get in touch with. Also, life insurance. You need life insurance. It's like literally a chiv that you need life insurance because, come on, it's it's very important. So reach out to moshe.alpert at nm.com or reach him at 718-644-1594. Free consultation. Have a conversation with him. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I have personal experience with Moshe Alpert. I work with him. Um, things like a donor advised fund. You give tzedakah, you have miser. You should have that set up and Moshe could get that done for you. And also I'd like to give a, a big welcome and a big shout out to Vai Ma'ain. May, many of you have heard of them already. They are the Shmir Seinayim videos, highly produced professional videos put out every single day where 10,000 people are signed up already. And it's time that you sign up. So go ahead and text join or WhatsApp join to 929-585-3982. We'll have a link in the description that you can sign up for Vai Ma'ain. And I'm just letting you know they're coming out with a pretty incredible video uh, in, a, in a week or two by Rabbi Yol Gold, highly produced, highly produced. In a couple of weeks, it's coming your way, but make sure until then to sign up. It's coming out the night before the Super Bowl, but make sure before then to sign up for Vayamayin on WhatsApp. Shmir Sinayim is important, and you should take the initiative and sign up to Vayamayin. So that's a shout out to some of our friends for this episode, and let's get right into it. This is our episode with Rabbi Yossi Zakatinsky. You are listening to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast featuring our nation's most impactful, influential, and meaningful people. So we're here with Rabbi Yossi Zakatinsky. Shalom Aleichem, guys. Aleichem, shalom, shalom Aleichem. Trying to think which bracha we make to finally making this happen. No. Baruch Hashem. Great white whale, you know. <laughs> Baruch Hashem, we're here. Shechiyonu. Yeah, Shechiyonu. You know I think it's, you're excited that it's yeah. here. Rada. A bracha that it's here. You know what's interesting is that all three of us, I don't say we all met, I met you and I met the Rav for the first time, I think, maybe not you the first time, in one place, and that's Yeshiva Nishma Satora, when the Rav was giving Very his deep. Wednesday night shirim. Yeah. And you were there. I was learning first Seder with the Rabbi Yossi Schwartz, Rabbi's that's cousin. Right. Yeah. He's now the Rav. Rav. That's right. Hush for Rav. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's, that's back, uh, there was no beard then. That goes very well. One second. There was a beard. It was just very, you know, it was uh, wasn't as long as it is now. It was on the inside. It wasn't as great. It was on the inside. <laughs> That's, right. That's, right. That's right. But uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, I remember it goes like, back a few years. It goes yeah, it's actually years. not that not that long ago. But yeah. a lot has happened. A lot has happened since. That is definitely true. And a lot has happened since the Rav's, you know, time growing up back in uh, back in Queens and yeah. Yeshiva Shara Torah. That's right. So I guess that's a it's probably a, a solid place to start. Is. Um, how anyone here? Who am I? What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, anyone who knows the Rav, who knows you, knows your 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 love for your affinity towards Panim Satara and Hasidus. And then if they hear that the Rav went to Yeshiva Shara Torah, they're like, Shara Torah and like Yerushalayim, Shara Torah, like we're, which Shara Torah? Because that's not exactly, you know, on the same level. I would love to hear that, that path. Oh, for sure. Listen, uh, so I, I grew up in Queens, like you mentioned, and uh, and I went to Sharatar. I was at Sharatar for high school, and I was there for um, a bunch of years in Beis Medrash too, about four years or so, about four years or so. And I consider uh, my uh, Rebbe Movik, you know, Rav Kalman Epstein. He's my yeah. Rebbe, for sure. Yeah, Rav Shalom Spitz, and my Rebbe. You know, the way I think, uh, the way I learn, it's always trying to model themselves, model myself after them, you know. This might sound a little bit funny, but uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, the, tr the truth of the matter is that whenever we do anything in the shul, 
I'm always thinking to myself, like my, my gauge in terms of like, is this normal or is this like, <laughs> should I do this? You know, yeah. it's like, what would I, if if Colin was right here, mm-hmm. would I do it? You know, that's the barometer. That's the barometer in my mind. Now, uh, it, it, you know, <laughs> who so knows if I get it right or not. Yeah. But, um, but that's, that's where I learned for about four, four to five years in base Madrish. And then uh, a lot of times having the barometer itself is well, enough to know that uh, it's very important. You know, there's a principle in Pneum Satyra that nothing new can grow and develop just in a vacuum, like on its own. The language of the Rizal, the concept is that anything new only develops on the feet of the old. So it always has to be that Hiskashras to where you come from. You can't ever uh, forget that, you know, as much as uh, a person has an obligation to be innovative and to be creative and to sort of unpackage themselves but who we are is ultimately rooted in uh, where we come from, you know, and, and it's our abeim that give us the keys to ourselves, you know. So ultimately, we're own, our own people, and we have our own tires, our own ideas, and our own uh, shlichas in the world. But, uh, it's the permission, but who we like, are, uh, like like Kivi Perlman says, Doctor Kivi Perlman, it's yeah. the permission that you that you receive from those people in your life that allow you. It's, it's sort of like wh- what the Rav said about mm-hmm. thinking. Well, is this what would what would Rav Kalman say? That's right. That's right. So you know, you're saying that everything the Rav does, Rav Kalman. <laughs> uh, tr- listen, I, I, those those years are, uh, you know, I look back with like you know, the the most fond memories. Like those were the best years of your life in your Bachar Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so like you know, at the time you catch, you know, the dorm's not comfortable, the chicken's not good. I mean, Shara Torah's dorm know. is <laughs> something <laughs> else. Didn't they like record an episode of like Law and Order there? No, I heard that's a thing because it was like really scary place, like bare walls, pipes. There's all sorts of legends, you know? Right. All sorts of legends. Um, For anyone that's listening and not watching, my response was a massive shoulder shrug <laughs> to whether or not they recorded an episode there. And I, I actually th- fell off the chair, for those that that, that uh, are just listening. <laughs> Maybe that was part uh, of the episode? Of yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I think there's something to say, Agrada, about that, uh, of going through, when a person's young, to go through those years of, of um, you know, breaking one's habits and breaking, you know, pushing oneself a little bit in terms of precious and, yeah. you know, pushing past your comfort zone a little bit in the Vedas Hashem. That's a good thing. It's a, yeah. it's a good thing, you know. It's a, it's the nature of Bachrim that are, like, sort of into it to push themselves, you know, to not sleep enough, maybe not to have the healthiest diet. And so, like, technically, is that right? Is that good? Is that healthy? No. I mean, the, the goal is a person to be sort of balance, in the yeah. balance, the middle path. But there is something to say about beginning starting off extreme really you know? interesting yeah. okay yeah did, did the rub have a relationship with Rav Zalag Epstein so when I was there Rav Zalag was no longer giving you know like a regular steady like a blotch here in the Gemara right but but he was certainly a presence uh, he was he would give every Sunday he would come to give uh, a shir and Rambam say for mitzvahs which is the whole uh, Rav Zalag to be to be in yeshiva where like there was a tzaddik you saw it Eilam, and like the Gadol Hadar one of the Gadol Hadar that was a presence there you know, and you knew that when he came, you knew it. The whole shift, there was an atmosphere. And you could smell the cigars also. <laughs> and there was, it was just, you know, uh, that was not, those are some of the most uh, powerful memories I have. It's like, you know, Yom Narayim, when he would get an aliyah, or Shavuos, Shavuos morning, he would get an aliyah, he would always cry, you know, by Birch Satira. And just, you know, it's the small little things of like, Nadim Gadla, you know, he wouldn't turn his neck. You wouldn't turn his turn his neck. So like when you when he Whoops, uh, like physically no self control, self control. God saw them like the if he's going to turn, he's, it's a decision that he's making to turn to you. It's not like a reaction, you know. Wow, that's very, he was, very interesting. Uh, I didn't know that's even something to strive for. That's that's really sure. it's the small little things, you know. Yeah, he was uh, he was not I mean, he was an Adam God and Tyrant of Avida and all these things. His Shmon Esrei's on Rosh Hashanah night. But I what I remember also is that. They weren't consistent. You know, like sometimes like you can clock how long your shmanasries are and they're pretty much the same every time, which like maybe makes you think about whether you're just copying yourself. <laughs> but with him, it wasn't like that, you know? Like one one Rosh Hashanah, I remember in particular, his shmanasri was like an hour and a half. I say a mice about one of the big Bali Musar that on Purim, one of the Chevra was able to mimic the shmanasri of the mm-hmm. Bal Musar, of the Gadol, and uh, he was Muhammad Sebrachan over it. He was right. broken. He was crying. And the, the, the member of the Hevra was like, 
devastated that maybe he hurt the feelings of his yeah, Rebbe. Yeah. And he said, no, he says, that when I saw you mimic it so perfect, perfectly, I thought maybe I'm copying myself. Yeah, there's truth to that. So b- truth that's and we should, I mean, like, I, I feel like Shrunesa shouldn't be something that's consistent. It should be very inconsistent. For sure. It's it, but it, Listen, it, it's difficult because we get into patterns, you know? Yeah. Even spiritually, we get into patterns. But by Rizalik, I noticed that it wasn't like that. It was very, uh, it was very authentic. Sometimes fast, sometimes slow. Did the Rav have any interactions with with so him I had that you recall? With, at that time, it was hard to have a personal cash. He was already older, you know. Yeah. But uh, but I had I had a few interactions, you know, a few interactions, you know, like the classic things, get a bracha or to think of a question to ask, you know, just to be able to have the opportunity to ask. Right. You know, I remember distinctly uh, many Rosh Hashivas, many Rosh Hashivas and, and Rebbes and so on coming to be Shalitza from him. It was like it was the funniest scene because you had. Yeah, if you look, they would always come, you know, it's a, they would come with the, with the entourage, you know, Kabayim and, and Rebbe's would come in like their fur coats, you know, and he was just in his office, without, <laughs> you know, in a sweater vest, maybe like smoking a cigar, <laughs> you know, completely. And all these where they would come in, like, you know, whatever was burdening them, you know, they would always leave and just like gorillas off their chests, you yeah. know, it's really, yeah, mm-hmm. it was, uh, he was, he was, he was known for his eights, you know. Uh, and and it was always like, and again, like always with being authentic. So you can never tell, you know. You can yeah. never tell. I remember I'll give you an example once. This was going back when I was in twelfth grade. So at the time, I don't remember exactly what was going on in the world with Eretz Yisrael, but there was something going on, and there was a big, uh, there was a big gathering or whatever uh, demonstration, whatever, like in Washington. And it was mostly like non-religious schools, Jewish non-religious schools mm-hmm. and very modern Orthodox schools went. And again, I don't remember exactly what was going on, but it was something big, you know, with the Eretz Yisrael. And so I remember, I remember this distinctly that we were in 12th grade, we were in class by this year. And the guys, we were, we were talking about the matzah was going on and we were asking our Rebbe, we said like, we should go, like, you know, Eretz Yisrael, Klai Yisrael, it's like, it's a Klai Yisrael Indian, like we should go, you know. And the Rebbe said, doesn't he? And he wasn't wrong. It was just a certain perspective. He's saying, you know, the best thing that we can do for the Yishev Eretz Yisrael is to learn and to keep the Seder and to do it. And then someone knocks on the, the office door and, you know, calls the Rebbe out. And, the Rebbe comes out. and he comes back two minutes later. It was like such a perfect, you know, scripted scene. And he says, okay, the Rashi Rizalik said that we all have to go to, uh, to Washington, <laughs> you know. And it's not just, not just Sharatar, but other Yishevs also went. They called, other Rashivas called the Rizalik what to do. And Rizalik said, we should go. And other other situations, he said not. So it was it was you know, it was uh, it was it was whatever the, uh, he felt authentically. It wasn't just he wasn't following any particular script. The script sure. he was following was uh, Dvar Hashem, Tyra. You know what I'm saying? But I think people that that are familiar with you today mm-hmm. and that are listening to your shurim and living the Tyra that you're sharing with this generation, yeah, they they associate that with Pnimi Satyra, Chesidus. Mm-hmm with depth, and I think it's important for our audience to understand the foundation upon which sure. all of that was built. I understand you published multiple svarim in Nigla, on Tfila and Moyed Kutten, and I assume yeah. that was all in the foundation built at Shara Taira. Yeah. But we'd love to hear a little bit of that context, like the Nigla, and then maybe that that journey into Panemius. So, so like, like, listen, like you guys mentioned yourselves, Sharatar is, is not a Hasidish place, you know. <laughs> what? Even, even, yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, and even other Hasidish places are not, yeah. They're, so even Hasidish places are not, you know, outside of certain, you know, Chabad, really outside of that, and and rest of yeshivas, most Hasidish places are not um, teaching Hasidus in a, you know, in a systematic way. I mean, you know, by Hasidim, you know. The ruach of Hasidus is certainly pervasive in the culture, and they learn Hasidus as well, you know, Kedush Levi, Noyim and so on. But eh. but Sharatar is, is certainly not not like that. But but, but so Sharatar was obviously heavily focused on, on Gemara, Shas and Paiskim. But but the the Rabbeim, the Rosh Hashivas over there are are just so humble and so honest and so authentic that they're not. It does, you know, I, I, I'll give you an example. I remember there was a friend of mine who, who was in, it was, it was in yeshiva, and at some point, like, he wasn't enjoying, uh, this year of college year wasn't speaking to him anymore. Whatever, it wasn't, a, 
So he, he like he wasn't being matzliach. Wasn't so I told him like so stop go, like if it's not for you then stop. You can still eat shiva. You know what I'm saying? Don't go to the so He said how could I not go? I said speak to Rav Kalman. Go to go to Rebbe. So he's like, I can't, you know, I'm going to tell him I don't like Yashir. Or yeah. So I said, trust me, Rebbe's not going to be a fan. Uh, so he went to, to Rebbe, and, uh, and Rebbe said to me, he said, you know, Moishi, whatever, you know, his name was, like, Moishi Rebbeinu didn't go to Moishir. Like, I don't have a monopoly over Tyra, whatever, you know, because I'm the eight. Doesn't speak to them. You know, you could go to another yeshiva or stay here and don't go, whatever. So there's there's a certain honesty and openness that uh, that that comes. You have to keep to the seder, you know what I'm saying. You have to keep, you know, you have to, you know, keep your head above water with that. And But outside of that, I I was learning uh, chesedus and so on. Beinas dorm, beinas dorm. During the seder was always <laughs> give you one story. Is like when I was in eleventh um, grade, so it was night seder, and. Uh, I guess it was like we were chazering the shear or something. So I was chazering the shear and I chazered it quickly. And then I was learning the Kutei Lachis from, uh, from Nassim Bressler. So I saw my Rebbe, he was walking, you know, he's coming up the aisle. So I quickly closed the Kutei Lachis, opened the Gemara. <laughs> so he comes, he comes up to me, he says, Yassi, you finish chazering? Learn whatever you want. Don't think I'm stupid. <laughs> learn whatever you want, you know? And that, that was sort of the approach of like, you're being with Slich and Gemara, you're learning well, you're normal, you're healthy. So what's why why can't you learn a tzaddik too? Like what's I don't like I don't to me like when people people sometimes talk to me about this this uh, dialectic you know the yeshiva world Nicholas, I honestly I I don't I don't um, I don't know what the problem is I don't understand the problem I don't see I don't see a divide I, I simply don't see it I you want to learn halacha and shas and, and get to the bottom of the sugya wh- wh- how in the world what in the world does that have any th- how does that detract at all from getting involved in, in Pneum Satar? Right. if anything it deepens it I yeah. may I, I may dare say in your presence be me that yeah. you you've done a masterful job of fusing those two worlds which historically no, were for some reason over here come mm-hmm. on I'm not finished <laughs> it was for some reason they were in separate bote medrish yeah. but there are shiurim where you clearly take an inyan through a sugya, through the gra, through sifrei chasidus with one with one common thread, and historically, Kali Yisrael wasn't approaching sugyas in that way. Listen, this is not me. I'm not uh, innovative. I'm not trying. You know, I'm really honestly, I, I don't. I don't have a particular. The word agenda is like not a nice word, but I, it's, right, it's not like yeah. that. It's not. I don't even have a mission. I really don't. I'm just trying to share tar that I that I think of. That, that's really. That that's really all I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm not like I don't come. I'm not coming from a place of like there's something broken that we have to. I mean, obviously, Sheikh is in here, so there's something right. that's broken. But, but there's no. Uh, I think it's just not where I'm coming you. from. I think I've learned from you that at the at the depth. Of the depth, everything is one. Everything is emes, yeah, well, and any f- fragmentation is a function of chitzonius. Right, right. So you're bringing us closer to that truth. So I'll, I'll tell you something. You know, it, it's not it's not something that's easy to do. I'm still struggling with this, and I'm I'm a I'm obviously as a person I'm a work in progress. If I'm still alive, it means there's still I'm a work in progress. Um, but. But the mistake that I think people often make is to think of these things as different categories. Like, like Baba Kama is about damages. Okay, that's one, you know, that's one sugya, whatever. That's one topic in Yiddishkeit. Okay, then, then uh, Shabbos is about Hilcha Shabbos, and um, and Pinyin Satara is about how God runs the world, or you know, things like that. That that's 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 not at all what Tyra is. It's not at all what Yiddishkeit is. All of Yiddishkeit is systems lenses through which God filters into our world. That's what Tyre is. And moving from that infinite, unknowable, you know, space of God into our world, and Tyre is sort of the, the vehicle that that happens, there's different layers, there's different lenses, there's different layers to that transmission, to that, to that movement from the unknown to the known. And all the different layers of Tyra are just, that, that's what they are. They're just simply different layers of lenses and different, different, uh, you know, 
different intensity levels of divine presence. That, that's really all it is. And so it's not like different topics. You know, it, in Kabbalah we're taught that there are certain basic building blocks needed in order to allow God's presence into the world. And th- that, that, those, I'm not, listen, there's not the, I can't really explain it too much, but, but those basic components are truths that have to be found in everything. So, for example, if let's say you're learning, whatever you're learning, I don't know, you're learning a sugin in Bab Metziah, El Metziah, whatever, right? So you go through a topic, and you go to the Gemara, fine. And then there's like, in the Rishonim, so you have, uh, uh, you know, Rashi versus Taisvis uh, versus the Rambam. Three opinions, whatever. Okay. So it usually, so in, in, in the world of the yeshivas, the ultimate goal and the, the, the Everest is to be able to figure out who says what and in what way they're different from each other. That's the goal. So if you could figure out Rashi's opinion and how it's different than Taisvis and how the Rambam is different than both two, you're good. You've accomplished your mission. But there's always one question that is never asked and never definitely not answered, which is, okay, but why does Rashi say what he says and not like Tysus? Because oh, he has a riot against Tysus. The... Proofs go back and forth, and when the dust all settles, Rashi is willing to die for his opinion, and Tysus is willing to die for his opinion, and the Ramam is dying for his opinion. Why are they, why? Like me sitting back, like I hear both all sides. Like they all kind of make sense, and you could sort of weave the Gemara according to everyone. And the Gemara doesn't doesn't fit perfectly according to any one opinion. So why is everyone like? So why do they st- stick to their sides like that? That that's an unanswered question. That's where you need Pinyas Satira because in Pinyas Satira, what you realize through Pinyas Satira, what you realize is that this sugya, you're not just learning about what to do when you find a lost object. And Rashi says like this, and Tysus and the Rama. No, 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 no. This is a this is a system that is being arranged. The, to allow God's presence into your life right now in this particular way. And because in Kabbalah we know ideas of certain necessary components and ingredients through which God filters into our world, so every sugi is going to have to have those components. So you're going to have to, you're going to, have to find a shita in any particular sugi that embodies chesed. And you're going to need to find the opinion that embodies gevura and embodies teferis and all the spheres and all the midas and the oil all the infrastructure that Kabul talks about is the infrastructure behind every single piece of Tyra. Because that's what Tyra is. Tyra is just a, 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 a more down-to-earth manifestation of these systems that Kabul talks about openly to allow God into our world. And every sugya is that. So when, when Rashi says his opinion, and Taisa says his opinion, and the Ramam says his opinion, they're not just saying ideas that make sense. They, they are coming together in this particular corner of Shas to, man, to be the embodiment of the system to allow God into your universe in this particular way. And so that, so that, 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 and that changes the whole experience of learning. It changes your understanding of why Rashi says what he says, because the, his neshama in this sugya is functioning in this particular way to allow God's light into our universe in that particular way. And you need Taisvis, whose soul is functioning as a different part of this cohesive system. So it's like if you build a building, like you need all these different bricks and you need all these different types of materials. You can't just have a building with only one material. Right. So every, every particular topic in Tyra is another building to allow God's presence into our lives. And so every sugya needs different, these different materials. Let me ask, ask the Rav, it might be a blunt way of asking it, but if in some time, maybe now or in 10 years, the Rav would open up a yeshiva, would you mm. in, institutionalize people? Now, like Satira? during the episode? or Like right now, like this is a fundraiser. <laughs> um, Press the button, the walls turn around. Yes. You're now at a of Malka, people. <laughs> Highly theoretical scenario. Yes, very theoretical, but if chains like... <laughs> Shop you in the chair. Uh, you're not going anywhere. It's not Shara Torah. But <laughs> if if the if the rubber were to start a yeshiva, would you introduce Panima Satara as a system? Would you institutionalize it? Or would you stick with the Messiah of how it's been, which has been a star? 
See that I'll tell you the truth. I I, I don't think um, I, I it's a good question and it needs more thought. Um, but I I'm not, I'm not a huge believer in the idea of there of that there's something really missing and broken in the system. I don't. I think I think the same shas and paiskim and the same lumnus and the same gemara as the guys learning yeshiva is exactly what they're supposed to be doing. It's exactly what they're supposed to be doing. It's just a matter of having the background to appreciate what it is that you're doing, and why every single opinion that's brought down in Chazal is absolutely necessary for the, you know, for the Jenga building, you know, because you take out one sheet the whole yeah. thing collapses and then God can't be manifest through it. Like it's, it sounds like a pretty piece important piece though. And it might be a missing piece. Like I, I went through the yeshiva system. I love yeshiva. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> um, I didn't just lie, but I love yeshiva. And that, component and i think everyone who davens in the rav shul including myself will say that hearing the rav speeches and and the shirim there's like this missing mm -hmm. link that can make everything sort of click now what if some yeshivas don't have that i mean most yeshivas don't have it and it, right what, what if that's introduced right. like what could it accomplish Pretty good I stuff. Oh, I guess I guess we could find out. I mean, listen, it, you, you've had yeah, you know, in Chabad, for example, you have uh, you know the system, the Rashab set up to Chitimimim, so they would like I mentioned before in Chabad they learn Chassidus in a in a you know I I didn't go to Chabad yeshivas, so I, I learned a lot of Chabad, Chabad Torah, but uh, but they have a somewhat of a, again I'm not super familiar with it, mm -hmm. but um, you know, but most of the day, at least you know, reading the countries that the Rashab wrote to establish yeshiva, I've never really been to it. But uh, most of the day is regular, you know, regular yeshiva learning. I, I, I think there's two challenges. I think there's two challenges. First of all, the, it, ha it would have to be done in a way, it would have to be done with a lot of seichel because you don't want to overwhelm people. It, it, could, be, it could be difficult. It could be difficult. Uh, it could be difficult, but it can be done. Um, I, I, it can be done. I think we're moving the needle a little bit closer to. <laughs> it could be done. It could be done. It's not. I, and I and I don't think, like I said, I I really really don't think it would look like a complete overhaul of the system. I, I'm not a believer in that. I'm really not. I think that the quote unquote system has sur has has let, allow us to survive gullus, not just to survive gullus. That's it's 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 where Tyra thrives and Tyra lives. Like that's everything's built on the old. You know. I'm not a believer that it's broken and all these things. It's just, yeah, I think exactly what you're saying. Just to uh, give a little nuance and background. In other words, it's like, it, it's like the it, Yiddish guy is exactly what people think it is. It's just, there's, it's just three dimensional. There's more to it. Just people only see the two dimensional front of it, but it's three dimensional. It's like, you're not missing anything per se. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, like you put on scissors properly, you did the mitzvah tzitzis. Like that's good, but there yeah. is value, I, I presume, and and I think some of this exists in your own story to today, that there is value in building a massive structure of nigla, yeah, in order to then build upon it. Yes, Panemius. That was my personal that's by design. My personal experience was like that as well when I was in high school. Again, looking back, the the you know. It says in Pasuk, the Rabbanu Shem created the world, Bereshit Bar Lakim, right? In the beginning, Hashem created the world, and the universe was Tzoyvavayu, was chaos, right? Mom is shockingly chaotic. And uh, then the Rabbanu says, let there be light. That's not just a history lesson in creation. That's how a person goes through life as well. There is there is such a thing that beginnings are chaotic. Begin and chaos means, chaos means everything is there, but it's in complete disarray. Right, so you have a, a a jigsaw puzzle, like a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. There's there's only the only way to begin to put that puzzle to be, puzzle together is if you take and you just throw all the pieces on the floor. You can't you can't like when it's all contained in the box, you can't put it. You can't even begin. So you have to just throw it all out, and then you can begin to arrange it. So life is like that too. Sometimes a person has to go through that time of tayuva vayu. Tayuva means that like everything is there, and it's good, and it's things that you're going to need, but it's an old disarray. And then you can move on to the next period of ER, of order and organization. So, like when I was in high school, I uh, like the, the the house that I grew up in was uh, was a house that was full of like chassidus. It wasn't uh, 
like my my father's a big tzaddik, my my mother's a big tzaddik. Is they're inv- they've involved in kira for the whole, their whole lives. I I grew up in a house that was full of bali tshuva and gerim and people that are not yet from and you know or you know so it, and and you know my grandfather went to chabad. In yeshiva in, in Connecticut, my father went to Chabad for a little bit. Huh? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. My father was a kapata, you know. Your grandmother is famously my grandmother. Uh, my grandmother the, she was very, fire Chabad. She's, yeah, she's uh, she was very close to the rabbi. Like they were very very close. So it was, I so you know it, it wasn't a formal education in the house of like, you know, Dirla Kim Chaim that we're learning. Right. You know, but you know it was uh you know on my mother's side i come from mishpat uh, you know and you're named uh, for the meshilayah yes yeah. so, to the, so, so to the contrary family. you know being that your your father comes from it sounds like a chabad home yeah chabad some home. like they weren't what was it? they weren't a fit blood chabad mm-hmm. so when they came to america they came to america long like my, i'm seventh generation american on my father's side so they've been here for a long time um seventh generation american yes yeah. that's, that's like we're like in the 18th century. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, the, there there are streams of the family that are not Jewish anymore. Right. But uh, but yeah, we heard for a long time. So at that point, they were always from, but they just simply didn't know a lot. So whatever they knew, they kept, and it wasn't Chabad. But anything that had to be filled, all the gaps that needed to be filled in, were filled in by the yeshivas that my grandfather went to, which was Chabad. So that's so how the Minhagim became a little bit uh, confused, which. Uh, you know, adds to the mosaic it, of my life. You were getting yeah. back to the, the Toyo Vavoyu. Yeah. Also, when I was in high school, so like I said, Hasidus was always something that was in the blood and it was always something that drew me. Um, to me, you know, so everyone, you know, there's different types of Nishamas. There are people that are like Oivdim, like more emotional, and then there's Maskilim, people that are more Seychaldic. What, what drew me and what continues to draw, drew, draw me is, um, is is the Haskalah. Like I wanted to know like I, the, these questions really they they plagued me and they they I mean in a good way. <laughs> Plague is a bad word, but like um like what what are Tillin? Like what what am I but not what am I doing like why like this is ridiculous. I don't want to do it anymore. No no I'm doing it. Like what are they? <laughs> what are they? Like what what is this? I think they're flak threes. Yeah that's what they're <laughs> called. Like Bechla, like yeah, what is Shabbos? Sits this, like, t- j- I, like what? What? What is all this? And and I knew that the answer is in is in Pinyas Satire. So where that where so that come from though? Like, is is the, the question that's burning my head is is learning Pinyas Satire is that a result of an emptiness, right? Because that could answer our question whether or not it should be institutionalized or not. Like maybe it shouldn't be taught like something like the Aleph phase. Maybe it's sh- it's something that you re- you learn as a result of you feeling that need for it i don't know what, that's what true with all of tyra you know uh, you know the, all of tyra has to be learned out of desperation you know there's a there's a medrash in tonad velio that there's a pal de gazach the medrash says that a yid once met elio novi and said to him rebbe teach me tyra so elio novi said i will if you answer this question properly why do you want to learn so he said well to learn Tyra's amazing skavaldic and eh, wrong answer what should I have said? What you should have said is that because without learning, a mom's empty and dead. Then it would have taught you. But if it's just like icing on the cake, then no. So that, that's true with all of Tyre. Mm-hmm. There is a challenge because, you know, to wait till a person is that thirsty and that hungry. A lot of life can go by. A lot, a lot of life can, go, can be gone. And there's a lot. And in that emptiness, a lot of other uh, things take its Other place. things get right. So, so that's why we have chinuch, right? When a, when a kid's under bar mitzvah, they're not really, it's not really the time for for mitzvahs yet, but they have to, they, we have to train them, right? So ideally, yeah, you can make the argument that we should wait till they're chalishing for it, you know, but by that point, it's already, you know, that's one of the challenges, that, like after you become bar mitzvah, not to think of mitzvahs as the same, you know, the same way that you did when you were 12. So there's truth to that. Yeah. We'll be right back. Right back, right back, right back. Momo, stop it. Right back. Okay, we'll be right back to this episode of the Meaningful People Podcast. But first, I want to tell you, about our good friends at Agra de Pirka. Agra de Pirka, who Momo's father, Mr. Irving Bauman, legend Irv, is part of. Uh, he's part of this program. It's a nationwide learning program for everyone who can spare time from 9.30 to 11.30 in the morning. Uh, they have top flight Magide Shirim lecturers. Thousand people daily, every single week, are joining 
Agua de Perca. And maybe it's time that you join Agua de Perca. Maybe it's time that your community has Agua de Perca. So go ahead and reach go ahead and reach out to 212-661-9400 or simply head to agradeperca.org. If you know how to spell that right, then you deserve a prize. It's A G R a d p i r k a dot org. Of course, the link will be in the show notes in the description. That's agadaperka dot org. Because nine thirty to eleven thirty a.m. If you have time to spare, there's nothing else you should be doing but learning. So go ahead and reach out to them. So when did I guess the rav, I guess take that leap from nigla to more nister? Was it after high school and you, you went there to Israel? No, um, when I was in high school. So my father. Like I said, it was always in the family. And it was never uh, so. One of the, a close family friend, uh, Ramesha Weinberger from Eish Kodesh, he was very close with the family, and he would give shirim and queens, and and so uh, at the time, you know, the world was smaller, I guess, than it was. So <laughs> I, I, you know, I would go to the shirim, you know, and try to, you know, like a, like a good bacher, you know, try to find opportunities to ask a question, you know, things like that. You give a parsha shir, mm-hmm. remember, once a week uh, in the shul in Queens. And um, and I would go. It was mamish. You know, it it was it. It spoke to me very very much because I knew that that like the the sugis that he's talking about, the sfarim that he's quoting. Like I just felt intuitively that's where the answers are going to be. Because again, it, what what drew me was not the experiential side of things at that point. I wanted to know what Yiddish is side. right, and so. So whatever the, the shir he was talking about would be addressing a particular Indian of this Hashem, and sometimes that Indian would satisfy that particular. But it was more of like, it's there, it's there. And so, so uh, throughout high school, I you know I did a kesh with him, and and, and he would uh, give me hadracha, you know, what's farm to learn, and I would just. Uh, but it was tayv you know what I'm saying? Like I, I was keeping the star. So that's always the thing. Like it was not, you know. Always in the storm. It was all like you know. It was extracurricular. Extracurricular, maybe during math class too, whatever. <laughs> but like, but you know, but to learn, you know, Chabad, a lot of Chabad Chassidus, Baltania, you know, Derech Mitzvah from the Tzemach Tzedek, and you know, Lukut Halachas and Rot Tzedek, Rot Tzedek a lot, a lot of Rot Tzedek, you know, a lot of Rot Tzedek. Those were the three things that I learned a lot in high school, and um, but honestly. Um, you guys are bringing out the like I don't know I feel comfortable over here. That's probably part of the setup. You know it's like a saying? scent. We have a scent in here that kind of just <laughs> uh, like yeah, 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 we're yeah, gonna yeah. get your social security really, number. I, I'm really a private person. I don't like talking about <laughs> myself. But uh, if anyone can 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 help, oh, me help from it. You know, most kids have to. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, oh okay, no, fine. No, so I was saying. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So I I I always felt. Um, that Hasidus, when I was learning Hasidus in high school, again, because my draw was like, I want the answers to these questions. Like I, and so Hasidus Bechlal, not all of Hasidus, but is very avoid oriented. And so to me, I was always learning it really as a stepping stone to get into Pneumus. I didn't know exactly what Pneumus was or what the Svarim were. But my gut told me that I have to go through these Svarim and get comfortable with these ideas in order to then go to the next level. And I'm not sure how to do that or when that happens, but I but I sort of feel that that's what I need to do. And so that was until 12th grade. At 12th grade, um, I uh, I, ho- I hope Rwanda is not going to mind me talking about this. But, uh, okay, it is, it is. So it's not like, you know, I, I remember I, I was I was hounding him, I was pushing him, like, I need I need to take the next level. This is not, it's, and again, I, I, it was always with shots and pie skin, you know what I mean? And uh, like I was working on making a seam, like, like a, you know, seam on Bavli at the time in 12th grade. So I was not, you know, it was always, you know. That's I intense. Was, like they stick that in there, like no big deal. That's, that's pretty. I'm only in. saying that because I think it's necessary for people to know. That's that amazing. Be, yeah. And, uh, th- this was all an extracurricular. Yeah. This was all wow. extracurricular. And, and during, during and you know, I was I was never my personality. Um, I have an extreme side to me, but I'm I, I'm always very conscious to to try to be like uh, like a normal person. You know, I mean, I'm not you know. So I was I had friends, and I would you know I wouldn't hang out so much because I wanted to learn. But but I was you know it was schmooze like it was not like it was you know <laughs> I remember there was a guy there was a new bacha that came to yeshiva and. Uh, 
you know, he's coming from like a more yeshivish place. who's trying to like uh, size up the guys <laughs> a little bit. So he, he had a kind of whatever he had, he had a cash on learning, whatever. So yes, one of my friends, so this friend of mine told me this later. He asked the guys like, who's the, who could ask a cash? It's like, who can, so he pointed, they pointed to me. It's like that guy with the chup. <laughs> yeah, you could talk to him and learn. At the time, I had to. You know, we have to see a picture. On top. To, you have a picture? No, it wasn't <laughs> like you know. It wasn't with jeans, you know, whatever. But like you know, it was, it was, anyway. So, so I pushed her one. Like I really, I, I need to take it to the next level. And um, so, with enough prodding, uh, he 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 suggested like just in pat, like you know, and I, I picked up on it uh, from the Leshem, Shem Yoshev. And um, there was a particular safer. The Leshem uh, was one of the great Litvish and Mikubalim, Snagdish and Mikubalim in the early 20th century. And um, from the base measure of the film, the guy. And he wrote many Svarim. But Yashiv, I think, is a descendant. Well, Yashiv is grand, was his grandson, yeah. So he, um, so what's it called? So he wrote, so the, the, he wrote Svarim. And then uh, re- a bunch of years ago, they put it in a safer called Shari Leshem. It's like a Likut. A gathering of all this lessons, lessons for him on different topics. And he said, okay, maybe like, you know, later on he told me that at the time he thought like, okay, I would read it like a page or two. And just like, you know, I, I was, I was the, the second I opened it, not the second, whatever. like the, after a few pieces, like this is it. Like, this is exactly what I've been looking for, what I've been waiting for. This is it. Wow. This is it. And it was just, it was, it was, it was uh, love at first sight. It was love at first sight. I had that with Ritzadik also. So he was like, my, you know, but, but but this was something different, you know. And I, but again, it was still type of value. So I didn't know exactly the, the, the system, the structure, what was, what, what was before that Rizal, what is that Rizal, what's the Leshem adding that as their own ideas. It was, it was all a hodgepodge. But I just knew, like, this is where it is. And this was in 12th grade. And then after 12th grade, so I went there to Israel just for the summer. I was there. I went back to Sharatara for a bunch of years, like I mentioned, but I was in Earth Israel. And I wanted to go right there. I wanted to go right there. And, and uh, <laughs> he, did not want to, he did not want to give the okay for that. I didn't even know what right there meant, but I just wanted, you know. There was other things that went on, other people that... Uh, that I was getting connected to good people, but uh, more extreme. And uh, Rewanger, like he said, okay, you have to go to Rav Gamli I, I, I didn't, I didn't know who Rav Gamli was at the time. He wasn't as, you know, again, the world was smaller, you know. And so he says, Rav is the biggest Mukov of the generation, you know, he's a, he'll tell you what to do. Wow. Okay. So it was, uh, it was scary. <laughs> that was scary. That was scary. And, and looking back, like, it could have gone... A number of ways, and like Baruch Hashem, Rav was a tzaddik, and he had Ruch Hakodesh, so he knew what I could handle, what I couldn't handle. I went to him and I asked him. It wasn't like a particular question in learning. It was just like, what do I, I, I you know, I'm learning Gemara, normal, healthy, like you know what I mean. And I'm keeping this dharm. I'm not uh, going rogue. Like I love it. I love Lumdis. I love Rishon. Like I love it. But I, I need, I need to start. Like I feel in my bones that this is something that I need. And so, and, and I've learned a lot of chassid. I give him the whole, you know, and he's sitting there. And if you've ever met Rav Gamliel, so he's uh, in his rocking chair with Ravina, you know, with Ravina Tantville, and, you know, and he's rocking and he has this, I remember this, he was playing with a Parker pen in his mouth, you know? Parker, it's fancy. That's it, yeah. It might have been just the cartridge, I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> but uh, he, he's looking at me and he says, uh, whatever you've done until now, it's fine, but you can't go right there. It'll be, it'll be sakana. You, you cannot go right there. You need two things. You need halacha and hakala. <laughs> Same letters, right? Halacha and hakala. So I said, so, I mean, I was, 12th grade, 17 or so. Yeah. So I wasn't getting married then, you know. So I said, so what, what, what does Rebbe mean? Like, what, what do you mean? Like, cold turkey? Like, none of this? And he said, yeah. He said, no, we have to just completely focus on, on nigla. Wow. wow. So he said, I said, what do you mean, like on Shabbos? What about on Shabbos? So he said, yeah, you know, you know, Levy on Shabbos, a little bit fine, but halacha. Kedushas Levy was the concession. Yeah. Wow. I remember him telling me at the time two things. He told me something from the Chazanish, two things from the Chazanish. Um, he said, 
he said first of the chazanish that the chazanish used to compare it to a, a helium balloon that the bigger the balloon the more helium the more sand the bag of sand that it requires to weigh it down so it shouldn't float away and he said and you'll see he said you'll see at the time that the chazanish also said that his nigla helped his nister his nister helped his nigla those are the two things that the Rebbe told me um, so he said on Shabbos you can learn chassidus you know but really um, and I was makabel it was one of those things sometimes in life you get advice and it's hard but you know in your bones it's the right thing wow like i knew it was the right thing right away right away and it must I have left. been very difficult to to encounter that reality because here you were seeking out the next step you wanted yeah. that approval you weren't you did you imagine that it was going to go the other way i didn't think it was going to be that i thought i thought uh, i don't know whatever i was i was looking for a drug maybe you'll say you know slow down or uh, um, but it resonated very, very much. But I, it was very difficult. I went in the beginning. It was uh, my was withdrawal, my was withdrawal, because it was uh, now. But but I threw myself into Nigla even more, you know. And that was seventeen. I didn't get married till I was about twenty, almost twenty nine. So all those years, just Nigla, just Nigla, nothing. And even on Chavez, I couldn't, wow, I couldn't wow. allow that's myself twelve years of Nigla, right? Yeah, there. and um, no Nister, no nothing, no Primus, nothing. I mean, it was keeping it termites and learning shots and, and so on. <laughs> but like, no, no Nister at all. Nothing. Wow. wow. I couldn't. I, and even I, I couldn't allow myself. It was too It was too raw to even like learn a Kedusha's, like he said, I could learn a Kedusha's Like I couldn't. I couldn't allow myself to do it because it would just, uh, you know, it, it, I couldn't allow myself to feel it. We would tease. Yeah, I couldn't do it. So all those years, just nigga. That's what I did. And then. Locha and Hakala. So Hakala, I was working on in the later years, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, so when I did get married, Baruch Hashem, so I went back to Eretz Yisrael after I got married, and I went back to Rav Gamli. Over the years, I kept in, in touch, you know. But by the way, during that time, it was also hard for me to have a cash with Siddiquim. Because it was, it was, you know, it was it was still, it would open up those uh, that part of my nefesh that like I, I couldn't really um, uh, satisfy. And so it was, it, it, sometimes it's easier just to close it off. Right. Um, but I remember going, <laughs> I went back to him and I said, okay, listen, Allah, I can't say I have, but a kala, that's, that's, that's something concrete. I, I could show you the ksuba. Like, it's I, an objective I, you know, outcome. That's, that's true. I have a kala. So he looks at me, he says, mash liv chachafetz. Learn whatever you want now. Wow. <laughs> so that was the license. Mash liv chachafetz. But looking back, and so I decided, listen, I said, I said to myself, listen, I, I spent all these years learning Nigla and I pride myself, maybe that's the wrong way to say it, but like, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I think it's a very big mila to think clearly and to speak clearly and to think in terms of like beginning, middle, end and to be organized. And so I'm not, so I said to myself, listen, you know, it's been many years since I learned Chesidus or whatever in high school, I'm, I, delete I don't want to have any preconceived notions of what is. Was that? I want to start from the beginning. I want to just start fresh from the beginning, uh, without any assumptions of what I remember from tenth grade. Like, and so that's what I did. So I spoke to Rav a little bit to try to get hadracha, but really, you know, it, uh, these types of limudim, it's hard to get specific hadracha. But I remembered one thing. I did remember is that in one of the Swarm of the Leshem, there's a, a Revi Levine. So he wrote a little biography about the Leshem in one of the one of the volumes. They were related to each other. So I remember, and I remember that in the bio, there was one paragraph where Rabbi Levine talked about the Derech Halimut of the Leshem. Of not just like every day, in terms of the, 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 the sort of <laughs> life. How he, uh, so I said, you know what? Let's use that. Let's use that. And that's what I did to the best of my abilities. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, so that that that's that's where it's all coming from. It's all rooted in Nigla. I don't like, like I said, I don't see it as a, as a steer at all. It takes time to, to eventually get to a place of where like you can look at a sugya and sort of you know see the sheetas from a pneumistical lens. That takes time, and it's there's a taiva of like sort of mingling the two ways of thinking because I think it takes time to sort of uh, develop a a, 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 a a systematic approach to Nigla and a systematic approach to Nister, and then to try to bring them together. Yeah. What, what would be your hadracha to our generation that is consuming your Torah, listening to your shiurim, 
and having their neshama activated by what you're teaching, how do they navigate this sort of dichotomy where they are activated and they want more and they feel that yearning for mm-hmm. more, but at the same time they know how important it is that they're listening to you state how important it is to be grounded in me. For sure, for sure. Every, listen, every neshama is different. Every, every neshama has its own mission in the world, its own particular section of Torah that it needs to conquer. It's on particular avayda, and so it's hard. I'm not a. I'm. I, it's hard to have a one size fits all, or this is the path. It's very. Uh, it's very difficult. I, I. I very often tell people think of it like a shmorg. Like when you go to a wedding, there's a shmorg, so you, they have like little plates. So you take a little plate and you try this. You know whatever this dish is, the food is, and if you like it, good. You go for seconds. If you don't like it, you say okay, that's gross. You put it down and you take another little plate and you try something else. If a guy goes to a shmorg and like he tries the first thing, he's like, okay, you know, finished, done, this whole place, terrible food, I'm out. <laughs> Ridiculous. You just tried one thing. You have to try a lot. You have to try a lot. What's with those small plates? Like, what's like? why do they have those by shmorgs? It's like kind of <laughs> ridiculous, no? You have the wrong guy uh, on, the, on the podcast. You have to ask someone else. I don't know. The rough just gave a shmorg, uh, a shmorg mashal. I figure you have the small plates. You can't fill up. Maybe it's for that reason, though. So the try stuff. You know? I think it helps See? their margins when people <laughs> fill up less food. Well, if you think about it, if it wasn't for that reality, then we wouldn't have that 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 muscle that I just gave. So maybe that's why. You know. There, there you go. Who knows? Who knows? But it's. I think it's important to know this Hashem to try a lot. And again, to the be- person has to has to be organized. I think as much as possible and grounded and rooted. And again, when I talk about like rooted in nigla, it's not. It's not like because otherwise you'll uh, go crazy. And you'll become, uh, you know, Michigan. It's, it's because it's it, it, maybe by some people that could be slightly true, although it's most likely not. Uh, if a guy's, if a guy's unstable, he's unstable without Nister as right. well. That's usually uh, overwhelming majority of the cases, anyway. But, but it's it's just it's not. With Tyra is is one thing. So like, why you know you don't have to sacrifice. It's the whole thing. Never you don't listen. There's only certain hours of the day. So yeah. obviously, the more dimensions of Torah you take on, the more sugas of Torah that you take on to learn. Obviously, there's a sacrifice in terms of hours. That, that, that's obvious. But long term, there's no sacrifice. Long term, there's no sacrifice at all. It's, it's, it's all one tyrus. It's, it's just deepening one thing to the other. Mm-hmm. What should a person do? A person has to look at it like a shmorg, try different things. Fig- I think there's two, there's two things, two questions that a person has to ask themselves and answer for themselves. Number one, are you a maskil or are you an ovid? Like, what's drawing you? Are you looking for answers to questions or are you trying to experience Yiddishkeit deeper? Now, the, 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 the maskil needs to experience also and the Ayvid needs to understand. But what's drawing you? Are you a maskil or are you an Ayvid? That's step one. That's question number one. And if you're a maskil, then there's going to be certain swarm that are going to be satisfying that. And if you're an Ayvid, there's other swarm that will satisfy that. That's the first question to ask yourself. Who are you? Maskil or Ovid? And number two, like what's your goal? Like what do you want at the end? You know, based on that determination of yourself to the best of your abilities right now, okay, I know what category I'm in. And so what do I really want out of this? Learning? Like where, where's my Everest? Like what do I want? And based on that, you know, you find your path. But you have to know what you're looking for, who you are and what you're looking for. You know, it's it sounds like daven a lot. Yeah, daven. It's a daven a lot. It's a daven a lot. The Gemara, this Gemara Bukharis, the Gemara says that there was a group, a city came to Rosh Hashanah and asked him, Rebbe, we want to learn Torah. We have to come to be the Chum, and what can we do to become Tami the Chum? Rosh Hashanah said daven, and he said, and they said, we do daven. He said, you also have to learn, <laughs> but you have to daven, daven a lot. You have to have a lot of patience. Those are the two, the most one. The two most important meters that a person has to have for Pneus Atayra, for all of Avadis Hashem, but Pneus in particular, is humility and patience. Humility and patience. You have to be humble. You have to go in to the discipline, thinking and knowing that you don't know. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. In Nigla, when you go through a Gemara, at the other end of it, you want to be able to, to know. You should come out knowing. In this, the, the subject matter is unknowable. So the goal is not necessarily to know. So you have to have humility for that. 
And number two, patience, because you're going to learn about things and you don't know what it means and it takes time. And, 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 and I can't even like, it, you know, Pneusa Torah, the nature of it is such that it's so one. It's so one that every th- additional fact that you learn in Pneusa Torah, you have to rethink the entire system. Mm. <laughs> rethink the entire system. I can't tell you how many times, and the whole system falls apart. Like, it, 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 it could cause a person a lot of cliches of das. And I've experienced this myself personally many, t- many times, where you learn something, a new piece of something, whatever, and you realize, wow, everything I knew was off. And I have to rethink the entire thing. Would, would the Rav care to share an example of that or, or not? It's hard. It's listen. If, no, I mean, I, I could, we don't want to. We don't want to cause another collapse of anything. Yeah, so, no, <laughs> we don't well, bring yeah, it back, yeah, right? No, but it's like it, it, you know, when, whatever, whatever level. There's certain storm like that, you know, when a person learns, um, you know, the Rashash, Shalom Sharavi, Sradish Mukubalim. You know, to, to, to learn that and, and, and even within that base medrash, the whole the whole system is is not upended, but you have to rethink the whole system. You know, every time like you know, within the, the writings of the Riza and so on, like every additional point is a reorientation of the entire system. There's no like, oh by the way, just like one Nakuda I forgot to mention. No, 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 no. Like that one Nakuda that I'm mentioning now, you have to rethink everything. And it's it's constantly rethinking the whole thing. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of humility. Those are the and you have to dive in a lot. Those are the qualities. And you have that. So if you have those me, this humility, patience, and you dive in a lot. And you answer to the best of your abilities, am I a maskil? Am I an ovid? And what do I want out of this limud? And you're healthy, you're grounded, you learn regular starim, and you talk to people. And you have friends, and you like you know how to smile, and you just a good guy, and you and you and you know, and you ha- and you have the hadracha to the best of your ability from people, and you'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be right back to this episode of the Meaningful People podcast. First, I want to tell you about our friends at Infinity Land Services. You know what? It's time for title. You got to get your title set up. You don't want any horror stories. Nobody has got time for that. When you need title, it isn't time for games. It's time to reach out to Infinity Land Services. They know what they're doing. They got your back. There's going to be no horror stories. You know what? If you've been in the title game, you understand that it's not so pashut. Sometimes things come up, but you need a title company behind you that is willing to work through anything. And that is ILS. So you need to reach out to ilstitle.com. That's ilstitle.com and find out how... Your title experience can have no horror stories. Because that's all what we're looking for, right? No stories. So reach out to ilstitle.com and enjoy the rest of this episode. Shifting gears for, for a moment to, I think, uh, a principle that we encounter in Panemia Satira of if we want to know where the Abishter has greatness in store for us, pay attention to where we struggle and where we encounter a mania. Mm-hmm. Recently, heard from Rav Tzadik about that um, Yisachar, Hamar Garam, and Rabbi Kiva was a Gilgal. Arizal says of Yisachar, and he was ready to bite a Talmud Chacham like a like a donkey, mm-hmm. like a Hamar. Mm-hmm. And that tendency, that mania towards something, is actually what allows us to propel us towards greatness. And I think broadening the lens of this discussion away from Sifrei Kabbalah specifically, but just mm-hmm. everyday human experience, the human condition, is that we encounter Meneas sure. everywhere we turn. And I think it gives people a lot of chizik to know that when there's a Meneas, when there's something holding us back, it's actually God knocking on our door saying, pay attention right here. Can I ask you to elaborate on that? Sure. You could ask. I mean, <laughs> um You know, listen, I, I, people, um, Baruch Hashem, God should bless me to be able to give chizik to people. But um, but the objective is to give truth, you know? If that's mechazik, truth, it will be mechazik. So it's not, it's not, you know, so this idea that you mentioned of, of 
you know, it's like, uh, there's different ways it's it's presented in the Svarim in different ways, you know, it's like, Rav Nachman used to say, it's brought in the Kutum Aran, that, you know, it says in Pasuk, uh, a heavy cloud came to our Sinai, right? So it says, Umayisha niga shel arafel, v'yamdo marachik, that the people moved back because of the cloud, but Umayisha approached the cloud because that's where God was. So as Rav Nachman said, very often there's, uh, you know, there's clouds, there's Vinayas, there's, there's Inyanim, you know, and the average person backs away. But the Moshe and the Bechinas Moshe within us it, it knows instinctually that that's where he has to go, Kisham Malikim, because that's where God is. I, I, think, I think, though, there's, there's something important to keep in mind when it comes to this, like because you're referencing like Ruzadik, which is a famous idea that people have quoted in his name, and it's true, he, he does write it, that uh, where a person struggles the most, like that's your Indian. That's your Indian, you know? Like you're sent to the world. But it's important to remember that there are, that's only half of the story. There are two, the Torah is divided into two parts. There's positive and negative, assay and lois assay. And those are, those are two systems. There's assay and there's lois assay. And every single one of us has a shlichus in the world in terms of the universe of assay and a shlichus in terms of the universe of lois assay. When Rav Tzadik says that where a person struggles the most, that's your Indian. That's why you're sent to the world to work on that, to work on that. To, your whole life is a struggle. But that's your Indian. That's true in terms of your Indian in life essays, in negative mitzvahs, because that's what that's the nature of every negative mitzvah is to hold you not to do it. It's, it's a struggle. But the nature of essay is not like that. There's also another area of life where you are naturally drawn, like your strengths lie in that place. And that's also your shlichas, but in terms of essays. So it's not, you know, so it's not only uh, just one-sided, like whatever's so hard for me, like that's going to be, th- 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 to complement that, there's also like what you're good at and what your strength is, or your, your talents, where you're up, like the tide of life taking you to that. Like that's also not, it doesn't always have to be hard. It doesn't always have to be hard. There's a certain aspect of your shlichus which is going to be difficult and it's going to be set up in such a way where there's, a big mania between you and success because that's you know, because that's the avoid of that category of life is the fight. It's the light, the life essay is holding you back. It's a struggle. That, that's the fight itself. And then there's another side of life, which is no, no, your, your job in this other section of your, of yourself is to do is to accomplish. And you're going to be drawn to that naturally. So there's I just, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's a good thing to remember is that that principle um, it's true, but it's only half of the story of our of our shlichus in the world, you know, but um, you know, you know, in, in the way of Chassidus, is, there's always you know, but within that world of minias and so on and, and, and struggling, you know, there's always two uh, two approaches: either to um, hyper focus on the difficulty and like push, um, and that's one approach. There's no question about it. But there's another mahalach complimentary mahalach, which is um, to fight, but it's always good to fight from uh, uh, from a from a strategic from a from a, 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 a good strategic point. So if you have an invading army, it's a mashal that Siddiqui has said. There's an invading army, and maybe this army is stronger than you, or maybe it's not stronger, but it's like going to take a lot of uh, effort to fight them head on. So what you can do is you can retreat to higher ground. And find yourself, put yourself in a better strategic position to then fight from. And so very often people people will think that Chasidus is like sort of escaping the, the arena of the Yitzhahara, the arena of where all the Minias exist, and sort of you're escaping to go somewhere else. And there is truth to that. You are retreating, but you're retreating to higher ground mm-hmm. from which you can fight better. Wow. Right. I heard a different marshal once. I think it's a Slonimer marshal about someone that, it's a true story, that someone yarshened a big plot of land with a lot of trees on it and wanted to develop the land and started knocking down one tree at a time. Mm-hmm. And he realized, it occurred to him that in this massive acreage, it's going to take him years to mm-hmm. knock down each one of these trees right? until finally someone just set the whole place on fire. And in a matter of hours, it was ready for him to, to develop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, with the Yetzirah, we can fight each thing one thing at a time and that that could take a whole lifetime or we could just set our neshama on fire and clear the deck it's a big excited to to 
we have the ability to decide, not always, very often we can decide the battleground. We can decide the battleground. You always have to fight. But we can decide where to fight. And we can decide to put it to, that I'm going to fight in it from a position of strength. It's like it's like it's like getting home court advantage. Yeah, and we all have the ability to. We can choose gain, that to gain to, home to court. a certain degree. To a certain that sometimes not, you know, obviously, right. but to a certain degree, it's like the Gemara says, "In paga b'cham right? If a, if a person is confronted by the Manov, by the Yitzhara, meshchel beis hamadrash, shlep into the base hamadrash. I think so, Ali Melech wrote a song. Oh, yeah, it's, to I, those words. Okay, could be it's coming out soon. Maybe I don't know. Did it, Ali Melech Bloomstein, the Bloomstein brothers, of course. It's, it came out of racism? I don't well? think it was released yet. But okay, Mach okay, wrote so the we have video. insider information over here. Right, listen, you know, you never know what you're going to hear on uh, yeah. in this podcast. Um, so the first you ask, so the simple interpretation of the Gemara is, okay, so the, if the Yitzhara, go learn, and the learning will, will get rid of the Yitzhara. So what is it, the, why does the, the Gemara say, bring him to the base medrash, meshchei lo base medrash, leave him and run to the base medrash? No, no, schlep the Yitzhara to the base medrash? That's the whole point is to get rid of the Yitzhara. No, no, no. We're saying that if you just were confronted with the Eight Sahara, it means that's your advisor right now to so deal with this. But you get to decide where to fight. You get to decide where to fight. So sometimes the same Eight Sahara could have different versions of itself. It could have grotesque, ugly versions of itself in the street, or it can it itself could have more subtle, edel, more sophisticated, and less extreme versions of itself. In the base measures. So when you're learning something, you're going back to Negla, right? So you're learning a Gemara. You're learning a Mishnah, you're learning a Pasuk, and you don't understand something. So you learn a, a Mishnah in Pergavis. Like, I don't, I don't understand what it's talking about. What don't you understand? Either you simply don't understand it, you have a question from something, whatever. So we tend to think, of that's a Kash, I don't know, it's a Kash, whatever. It's because there's something wrong with my head. No, no, no. That's, that's a f- version of the Eight Sahara. And now you're in a fight. But this arena that you're fighting the Eight Sahara is a nice place. That's a nice arena. But if you can overcome the Eight Sahara in that place, then that Eight Sahara has just been vanquished and he's not going to meet you in the street because the Eight, the eight Sahara was ready. So the Eight Sahara in the street is rooted in the Eight Sahara in the Gemara. And the, 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 that Eight Sahara, its version in that place of the base Medrash, is in a kasha. But if you could overcome that kasha, then you just killed the root of that Yetzirah, and when you meet it in the street, it's not going to be as strong anymore because it's been unplugged. So it's like, okay, so it still has some residual energy, so it might still struggle with you, but its head was cut off. And so that's, uh, you know, this is the, one of the deeper reasons why, you know, by the Musar movement, there was such a big, op- large opposition by many tzaddikim against learning Musar. You know, the yeshiva should be only for learning Shas and Paiskim and so on. And it's a difficult thing to understand, like, what's the big deal, you know? But part of it is, like, by, 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 by answering the kashas and learning, that is, uh, that, that's killing the head of the snake. So by, by, by being machshiv, the body, you know, in the same place of the head, like, that's, that's not what the base manager is for. The manager is is higher ground, right? It's that place of uh, it's 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 your home court. Like so, why are you, why would you, why would you invite, you know the the the, oppo- the opposing uh, fans into your home court? You just destroyed your home court advantage. Why would you do that? And like addressing it almost gives it credence that it doesn't deserve. Yeah. This uh, arguments the other way, but th- but this is a little bit where it was coming from. So mashchilu beis hamedrash. In other words, so there's always going to be minias. But it is up to us a little bit to decide where those mini, like what level minias we're going to be willing that we decide to handle. So, for example, in the Zara Kaddish, it says that davening is a time of war. When a person when a person davens and they throw themselves into davening with a slavus and they're and they're and they're dealing with their own inyanim during davening, that that that's that that's also dealing with all the yitzharas of the street, but in a much more in a nicer environment, in a home court environment. And like you can, it's much easier to handle that. It's when people, but, but if a person doesn't do that, if it's not Meshchile Beis HaMedrash, then, then you have to deal with the manoval in his home court, and that's much harder to do. So we're, it, it, all of Avadis Hashem is about engaging and fighting. 
But it, like I said, it's up to us sometimes, Not again, not always, but very often it's up to us to decide where we're going to engage with the Yitzhar. You know, that's sometimes up to us. I want to speak a little bit about uh, the Kehillah, uh, yeah. Helm of Akshay Hashem. Ah, Holy Jesus. Jesus. You know, the Hevra, ah. the, the the place which Baruch Hashem just closed on, on the building. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And, it's, and it's really grown very quickly. Yeah. Very quickly. And, and you you obviously had the rub there. And I'm, I'm curious, it grew from being in a living room yeah. or to a... <laughs> To a shul, which is faced one way, then like, okay, we got to face the other way. Okay, now we got to knock down some walls to like, we're going to probably build this thing up very, very quickly. And mm-hmm. it is a, tr- like, if any, I dive in there, I try to dive in there every Shabbos and Friday night and mm-hmm. there's hundreds of people there. <laughs> do you, do you, do you see a thirst in, in the world today for this panemius? And that's what's really, that's what people, why people are attracted to Kamalak Shashem? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, I, I, but I, listen, it re, honestly, if I could really, really be honest, it goes back to what I said before. I'm really just trying to share. I'm trying to fix my own neshama. That's, that's honestly, that's all I'm trying to do. And uh, I feel that for the tikkun of my neshama, I need to, to, to you know, to, to share the, the certain types of tar. But it's really just... Uh, it sounds like selfish. I'm just trying to fix myself. But it's not, it's not being. It just we all have good seats. We have courtside that, seats to yeah, the road. I, I was just trying. I was just trying. It's that's all I'm trying to do. And you know, I'm a big believer. People again, this might sound surprising to people, but I'm not. I don't think that there has to be. Like you asked me, like what, what, you know, what's the message for the generation? Every nisham, every 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 shar nisham is different. But the nature of souls is that when one soul speaks, another soul listens. Mm-hmm. So as long as, so if you, for example, so if one person, let's say the root of his neshama is the inion of like avoiding shotness, that's his inion. And you have another person, the root of his neshama is the midst of shluch I'm picking Give random up. examples. So, and, and this person whose neshama is shotness, right, his inion is like Silba, you know, Tzema Pishtim, yeah, his Indian Shatnas, he could be giving Shirim, and con- every single Shir he gives is somehow one way or another woven, in, like, nice. no oh. pun intended, yeah. like woven into Shatnas, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> See, I just fell into that. Yeah. So, uh, so, if he is speaking from the root of his Neshama, then the person that his Neshama Shluch came will be awakened by that, and he's going to be Mamish, and like so it's to me it's not about the message per se it's about two things it's about making sure that the message is giving over your neshama is that you are expressing your neshama and 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 you're and you're just trying to fix yourself you're just trying to fix yourself and then all of a sudden the people that that are listening to you their neshamas, again, assuming that they're, whatever, the, the situation, the environment is set in such a way that their neshamas will be woken up. I, their inyan, is something else. That's not the point. Neshamas awaken other neshamas. I think there's two things that a person has to have. You have to, the, the, it's going to sound a little bit like a paradox, but you have to know, you have to speak f- from your neshama. But you can never, you can never say what it is, because you don't know, or you just can't no, say. No, because you can't say. The nature of of soul, the divinity is sneistic. Interesting. It's sneistic. So, so everything a person says, I think, let's say a person's a rav or a magid or whatever, everything a person says should be revolving around his nakuda. But. But subtly, and that's not only because otherwise people just it's repetitive, you know. It's just that, that's the nature of neshama is that it needs, it needs a. a I'll, I'll give a terrible, terrible marshal. It's like a, it's like a shy turtle. It needs to have a, a quiet. It needs to be comfortable to come out of its shell. It needs a. You need to talk around it. Wow. So it's, it's not it's not the message. It's not people think like oh everyone has to talk about Kabbalah or Pneus Tyra. 
no, everyone has to be talking about the, their neshama, the shorsh of their neshama. If this person's shorsh and neshama is mesachas yivamis, then if he knows how to talk about that mitzad neshama, then it'll resonate. Mm-hmm. It'll resonate. And other people's neshamas will be sparked by that, even if their neshama is not yivamis. We'll get you right back to this episode of the Meaningful People Podcast. I want to tell you something very important, because if you're flying this week, if you're going on vacation, there's something that you need to know. You know, for every five hours of flying, one liter of water is lost. And that can lead to some hydration. It can lead to headache, fatigue. So what do you do? This is what you do. Very simple hack. Call Blue Glove Concierge, and they can get you set up with those IV drips that can get you back to 100%, even more than 100%, 120%. Imagine you go plug in your iPhone, and it doesn't just go to 100%, it goes to 120%. That could be with your body when you go Hit up Blue Glove Concierge. The link is in the description in the show notes. Reach out to them. Anywhere in New York, New Jersey, someone can come to you and give you these IV drips. So if you're traveling a lot, you're fatigued, you're tired, you're you're maybe dehydrated, there's something you can do about it. Also worth noting, they do have an urgent care in North Wilmere. The, the best people are Blue Glove Concierge. A big shout out to Adina Erez. You got to hit them up. In the description, in the show notes, that is Blue Glove Concierge. You can hit the WhatsApp link and just message them directly on WhatsApp. Enjoy the rest of this episode. I, I like also something that you said earlier, which is consistent with this, but a little bit different, that you're not necessarily engaged in the endeavor of giving people chizik, but rather speaking MS, teaching MS, Try. and people are moyredik nishazik from that. And I think it helps shed light on an unfortunate misconception mm-hmm. that in circles where Panimi Satura is learned and mm-hmm. shared that it's about everything is okay and let's just no, it's, chas v'sholem. It's b'chol not. It's b'chol not. It's, it's, listen, you know, someone asked me, someone asked me, just uh, another uh, Rav once asked me, like, you know, he, 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 we're having a conversation about being a rabbi in these days, and he, and he, there was a certain assumption he was making. If it's okay, can I talk to you? It's, we're friends, right? I mean, if people call me rabbi. I don't know. I'm just a guy. <laughs> That's an awesome conversation. So, <laughs> like, yeah. Is there like a so convention? It, it, you guys? Yeah, something like that. So, you know, it's okay. You know, so, <laughs> so it, 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 and there was a certain assumption that he was making of like, and I, and I, and I addressed it. I said, like, anyone in the shul knows at least I, 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 I maybe I try to be very friendly and very warm because I, I really, I, again, I don't look at myself as like a title. Like I'm just, you know, I'm a yid. I'm just trying to grow with everyone else. But I am very demanding of myself. And I try to be very demanding of the guys in the shul in terms of davening itself. Like, I, listen, it's, maybe it's, 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 it's something wrong with me, but like every time I daven, I'm like, a little bit disappointed if it's not an Elon Yom Kippur, you know? And that's not healthy. Like, I'll ask him it's not healthy, but that's a little bit of part of who I am. But people, uh, so, so, people have this misconception that people like, oh, everything's good. No, no, no. It's Havayda. Everyone knows, one of the, one of the, the popular words in, in, in Kalim Vakshi Hashem is Havayda, right? Because that's what it is. It's Havayda. It's like, at, and we have to demand of ourselves big things. And that's, that to me is one of the biggest, issue, biggest issues of, um, of just, th- of, of the bar being so low in Avoid the Hashem. You know, people, people, I, I mentioned this on Shabbos, um, that uh, people, when they talk about this topic, they usually, one of their things is like, you know, kiss people on the derech, you know, like if it wasn't, uh, you know, if it wasn't for, you know, the Fabrangans I mentioned, like, if it wasn't like, if, if not for Joey Nukem, maybe people would go off the derech or something, Kilo. Um, and to me, like, I, first of all, it's unbecoming to speak about Yidin as if they're so weak. Right. That that's what's holding them. It's it's, uh, it's not nice to talk about Jews like that. But it's also like, why, and why is that the bar? Like, we're supposed to be Nevi'im. Like, I, until I'm a Navi, I'm not satisfied. And until the guys in my shul are Nevi'im, I'm not satisfied. So it's not, this is not about uh, making it easy. Fuck it. It's very difficult to avoid. It makes it like, like every single shacharis is a universe that has never existed yet. And every single mitzvah that you encounter and every single gemara that you learn, you are being charged with putting together that infrastructure to allow God into this particular moment. And that infrastructure will pass you by. 
unless you daven properly. That's a void, though. That's very difficult. That's a big undertaking. This is not a ticket into having an easy life. This is a ticket into having a meaningful life and to and to and to live truthfully. But easy? Certainly not. Certainly not. That's a that's a again. That that's just you know. That's that's just the misconception that people have out of just uh, not knowing, just simple, simple not knowing. Do does the Rav have an I guess an objection or, or a desire one one way or the other to to ultimately be like a Rebbe, you know, to the Kehila, to the community, to to be to be a Rebbe. I don't know, uh, you know, everyone has to, like I said from the beginning, and I and I and I mean this. I'm just trying to fix my neshama. That's that's all I'm trying to do. And I, that's that's what all we're trying to do is just to fix our nishamas. You know, there's a <laughs> there's a fart. You don't know what it means to be a rebbe. So there's a there's a, um there's a vart from the Talmud Yaakov Yosef. It's a gavul to gavart. So he asked the kashi. He said, you know, by uh, the minig of Klai Yisrael is that the rav gives a shabbos a shabbos shuvadrasha. So what's the shabbos shuvadrasha for? Is to prepare people to do tshuva. You know. So he has a shayla, told this Yaakov Yosef, he says, so why, so this Shabbat Shuvah Josh should just be uh, Musar and Divi Cyrus. So why why is it that the minute that by Rabbanim, and myself included, that they give like a pilpul, you know, a shtickel tire first, and then at the end, it's Divi Musar. So he said like this, he said that one Jew, you can't, you can't inspire another Jew to Juva. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. The way to, the way to pick another Jew up is to is to connect with them on their level to whatever degree possible, and you pick yourself up with them. That's the way to do it. That's the only way to do it. So if I'm if a person is uh, is perfect in their inion, in uh, you know in their 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 inion of of, of 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 Shabbos, and there's another Jew that's struggling with their Shabbos, and I'm coming from a position of of strength and perfection, and I'm trying to inspire them through the Shabbos, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. What you have to do is to makasha yourself with that yid and say to yourself, okay, he's struggling with Shabbos in his level, but I have to find within myself something that I'm struggling with in my Shabbos. And then I have to do tshuva for my Shabbos, but because I'm bound with this person because I love him like a brother, so when I do tshuva for my Shabbos, it's automatically going to pick him up too. So Tal Siyak is like this. He says, the Rav is going to give uh, our people to do tshuva. How? The Rav presumably is at tzaddik. And the rest of the shul, they need to do tshuva. So, so what the rav heather has to do is say people say a shtigl tyra, become a balgaiva because of it. Mm-hmm. And now that he's a balgaiva, so gaiva is a vaydazar shvichas dam gilarai is mamish the worst of all things. Now he's just as bad as them, and he can do tshuva together. Yeah. That's like I said, you know, that that's it. we're all just trying, just trying to to find the rabbanu shalom. We're all just whether you're a maskil, you're an ayvid, you're up here, you're up there. Eh. We're all, we're all just, we're all just, you know, the neshama is chaos, right? And the Rabbanu Shalom brings into the world and he puts us together just enough to be functional, mm-hmm. right? And the rest of life is just trying to put the rest of ourselves together. So what? So this person is a little bit more put together than the other guy. We're all just, we're all just trying to find ourselves. That's Mahamish yeah. all this is. I think you have the, the B'nai Kehila that you have, including Nahi. You have such remarkable people that are part of your <coughs> chevra, and oh, one of whom is a very dear, close friend of mine, Eli Melech Bloomstein. Yeah, and his and his brother Arye. Yeah, and for sure. They're, they're very, very, very big at starting the shul. They, they still are major parts of the shul. So, you know, no, thank God, I'm glad. <laughs> there are no words. I mean, the the, the shul started in, in such a humble way. Like you know, from the very beginning. From the very beginning, like the chevra, like we, to whatever degree possible, because no one's perfect, you know, and we're all, like I said, if we're alive, we're, then we're a work in progress. But to whatever degree possible, our heads were on straight. Like we're not trying, and we still are not. And I have to remind myself of this. We're not, it's not about a shul per se. I said from the very beginning, I told the guys multiple times in that first meeting, and I've, I've mentioned in the shul also, I was never interested, and I'm still not interested in, in being a rub of a shul. On my matseva, I don't need it to say he had a shul. If you talk that you want a, a place where neshamas can come to put themselves together, to try to to try to serve the Russian together, to grow together, 
the place of Avoida? That I'm interested. Yeah, you need Shachas Mincha Marv, you need a Bima, you need an art, you know what I'm saying? You need a Gaba, you need a, you know. That, that's, that's what I want. That, that's, that's what I need. It's not a want. That's what I need. I need it for myself. I need it for myself. That's, uh, again, it sounds selfish, but like, but it's, but it's true. I need, I need it for myself. I couldn't, you know, I, I, I would dive in a KMH if I, uh, <laughs> even if I wasn't in love, you know. So. I am Rabbi Zakatinsky and I approve of this message. <laughs> right. um, you mentioned the word, you mentioned the word Matseva. And I don't want to go to a dark place, but Mirz Hashem Ad Meva Esrim, you should live and be well and continue to have the impact. But mm. ultimately, what, what does the Rev want to be remembered for? Uh, yeah. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a big debate among, among, among the Hasidim whether, whether it's possible to be a Hasid of two Rebbes. Can you be a chassid of two rabbis? You could have different rabbis. You could learn to it can be a chassid of two rabbis, really. So it's a big, uh, it's a debate. It's a shiloh, you know. There's a, a after the Balatani was nifter, for example. So, so it, it, with time, it became clear that the that the Balatani's son, the Mitha Rabbah, Rav Dov Bear, would would take over. But at the time, in the beginning, it wasn't so pashit. You had some chassidim that went to the Mitha Rabbah and others that went to Rav Aaron Shishelia, who was considered to be one of the big, the biggest. Talmud of the Baltanya, uh, the Mitla Rebbe as well, but the Mitla Rebbe had a different style of of Maim of, of Chassidus. It was a diff- there were certain differences, and so in the beginning it was uh yeah some Chassidus went to Rav Aaron, and so when when the dust settled and it became clear that Lamaisa the Mitla Rebbe was going to be the Rebbe, so the Mitla Rebbe when when a Chassid that came from Rav Aaron to go be by Mitla Rebbe, the Mitla Rebbe would smell his beard, he smell his beard, and. And from there, he would be able to tell whether he's still Makusha Tarabaran or not. And if he's still Makusha Tarabaran, he can't be a chassid of mine. You smell the beard. So, a ch- wow. yeah. So, there's too many people. These, these, are, these are Yidin, you know what I'm saying? These are big people. So, a chassid be'etzem, be'etzem is not shaykh to be a chassid of two rabbis. Because you'll see where I'm getting to with the cry. Yeah, I I, I, you, you know, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. It's a long, short way. <laughs> so the um, anyway, so so to be a chassid, the etzem, there's a term in, in chassidus that's used of hanochas atzmusai, to put yourself aside, to mamish, not like what I can gain and to like mamish hanochas atzmusai. That the rebbe's simcha is through the chassid, and the chassid feels simcha, but it's really the rebbe's simcha. Like Hanukkah, that's Musa. That's only possible to one person. Right? You can't. You can then grow from other people, but Hanukkah, that's Musa. So, I the, the goal of life is to be a chassid of the Rabbanu Shalom. That's the goal of life. It takes a long time. It can take lifetimes to be a real chassid of the Rabbanu Shalom. That's the goal of Hanukkah, that's Musa. Manish. So when you're when you ask me to envision my matzeva, it means that you're asking me what. What my to to envision my ultimate shlemus? Yeah, I, I then 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 you can't then you can't put words to that because that means that ultimate shlemus is to be chaser vanishlam, and if you're chaser vanishlam, there are no words about yourself. So I so that's why matzeva is written by other people, right? You can't write your own matzeva. <laughs> right, it's very definition. Saying it's a dumb question. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's a dumb question. I, if it was a dumb that was question, way. no, if it was a dumb question. <laughs> Then it wouldn't uh, require such a sophisticated answer. Right, right. So, uh, but but what but what I'm trying to say is is that the ultimate goal of life is to be completely bottle, delicose, and just to be a vehicle. So that's um, and 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 once you even say that that's what you want, it's a little bit of like you. Mm-hmm. So you sort of have to have to circle it, circle around it. Mm-hmm. It's the panemius of uh, my cousin Dov Shuren. He should be gazint. Dov Shuren's yeah. your cousin? Yeah, he sang my at my first cousin. He sang at my bobayom. Gavalt in Israel. Spiky apples. Yeah, his grandfather <laughs> was Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky. His, his father was the son-in-law. Didn't Rabbi think Yaakov. we'd be talking about spiky apples in this episode. But yeah, he <laughs> he wrote a nigan. Kucha beri hu. Tell me what to do. I want you to be my rebbe. This is the panemius of becoming a chassid of the Ebrister. Yeah, yeah. Avram uh, Avinu is called a chassid. As I'll say, Avram Avinu is called a chassid. That's what a chassid is. Can believe bottle, can believe bottle, and that's what the rabbi feels to his chassidim also, that all he is is just a vehicle for them. And that's that's uh, that's what it means to be a yeah, That's Yisrael. That's Yisrael. It's just 
Whatever, whatever the Rebbeinu Shalom needs of you at that moment, that's what it means to be you. Zakatinsky Shkoyach for, for joining. I have around, uh, I think, 40 unread messages from Yochanan with questions. <laughs> I think you two should speak more often. Yochanan has a lot of questions. I got to some of them, but... Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. But I re really, really appreciate the Rav coming in and giving, us, and giving us this time. I'm glad we were finally able to do yes. it. Yes. Baruch Hashem. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Everything. B'Shat Taiv and Mutzlachas. That's the Eker. Amen. 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 Hashem should bless you guys. You should be Matzliach. To be inspired. To inspire the people. And to, uh, you know, just like everyone else, just to fix our neshamas. That's what we should find that tikkun. Amen. E -R. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rabbi. Another Baruch Shem incredible experience, an episode of Meaningful Pool Podcast. It was such a pleasure to sit down with Rabbi Yossi who happens to be my Rav. Uh, it was a long time in the works, but Baruch Shem, we made it happen. Um, just a breath of fresh air. To me, the, the point of going cold turkey, just cutting off from Hasidus for 12 years at the request of Rav Gamliel. It's such a decision, just like the Amunas Chachamim that the Rav had in that moment is is really fascinating. He had mentioned, I don't know if he mentioned on the podcast, but he mentioned afterwards that he was like mamish and withdrawal. Um, but it all paid off because Rabbi Zakatinsky is now leading an incredible kahila in Lawrence, New York, Kahal Mavakshi Hashem, which every week is full of hundreds of people. Uh, and like, like the Rav said in the podcast, he doesn't look at himself as a Rav. He looks at himself as a, someone who runs a shul with neshamas come to dwell, come to grow. Uh, so that is this week's episode of the Meaningful People podcast. Just a reminder, Momo has is learning at the Shasathon. And I said that he's going to have his raised amount um, by last week's a time episode. And if he doesn't, I'm going to cover the difference. So right now I'm on the line for like $10,000. So if you want to help bail me out, go ahead and donate to Momo Shasathon page. I'll put the link in the description in the show notes. If you want me to go broke, then don't donate and just let me give the $10,000 myself. I'll I'll just take all the schism for myself. Ha, huh, how about that? Anyways, uh, we'll be back at you next week with another episode of the Meaningful People podcast. Momo will be sitting here right next to me. Momo, I miss you. I can't believe you left me here alone for today. Um, but anyways, we'll see you all next week. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed this video from Meaningful Minute. We have so much more content for you. You may like this. You may like this. Take your pick. Let us know what you think.